Good afternoon, everyone. Sundays are special because it's time to sit back and enjoy reading and listening classical texts read by members of Test Reading Club under the guidance of one of the best teachers ever, Dr. Kalyanimal. For newcomers, we are students of Test, and for a better understanding of literary texts and to promote the reading of original texts, we read out classical works every Sunday at 2 p.m. Reading text not only enhances our understanding of it, but brings us closer to the text as well as the author. So if you are someone who wishes to read along, just drop us a message and we'll add you to our reading club. Or you may also join Test Reading Club on Telegram. Without much delay, over to Harshika, a narrator for today. By the way, we are reading A Doll's House, Act 2 today. Act 2, the same scene. The Christmas tree is in the corner by the piano, stripped on its ornament and with burned down cand candles and on its disheveled branches. Nora's clock are and hat are lying on the sofa. She is alone in the room, walking about uneasily. She is stopped by the sofa and takes up her clock. Nora drops the clock. Someone is coming now. Goes to the door and listen. No, it is no one. Of course, no one will come today, Christmas Day. Not tomorrow either. But perhaps... Opens the door and looks out. No, nothing in the letterbox. It is quite empty. Comes forward. What rubbish. Of course, he can't be in earnest about it. Such a thing couldn't happen. It is impossible. I have three little children. Enter the nurse from the room on the left, carrying a big cardboard box. At least I have found the box with the fancy trays. Thanks. Put it on the table. Nurse, doing so. But it is very much in wanting of mending. I should like to tear it into a hundred thousand pieces. What an idea. It can easily be put in order. Just a little patience. Yes, I will go and get Mrs. Lynn to come and help me with it. What? Out again? In this horrible weather? You will catch cold, ma'am, and make yourself ill. Well, worse things, worse than that might happen. How are the children? The poor little souls are playing with their Christmas presents, but... Do they ask much for me? You see, they are so accustomed to have their mama with them. Yes, but nurse, I shall not be able to be so much with them now as I was before. Oh, well, young children easily get accustomed to anything. Do you think so? Do you think they could forget their mother if she went away altogether? Good heavens, went away altogether? Nurse, I want you to tell me something I have often wondered about. How could you? the heart to put your own child among strangers? I was obliged to, if I wanted to be little Nora's nurse. Yes, but how could you be willing to do it? What, when I was going to get such a good place by it? A poor girl who has got into trouble should be glad to. Besides, that wicked man didn't do a single thing for me. But I suppose you're daughter has quite forgotten you. No, indeed, she hasn't. She wrote to me when she was confirmed and when she was married. Nora, putting her arms around her neck. Dear old Anne, you were a good mother to me when I was little. Little Nora, poor dear, had no other mother but me. And if my little ones had no other mother, I'm sure you would. Once, what nonsense I am talking Opens the box. Go into them. Now I must. You will see tomorrow how charming I shall, I shall look. I'm sure there will be no one at the ball so charming as you, ma'am. Goes into the room on the left. Nora begins to unpack the box but soon pushes it away from her. If only I dared go out. 
if only no one would come if only i could be sure nothing would happen here in the meantime stuff and nonsense no one will come only i mustn't think about it i will brush my muff what lovely lovely gloves out of my thoughts out of my thoughts one two three four five six ah screams there is coming makes a movement towards the door but is stand is irresolute enter mrs lynn from the hall where she has taken off her cloak and hat oh it's you christine there is no one else out there is there how good of you to come i heard you were up asking for me yes i was passing by as a matter of fact it is something you could help me with let us sit out here on the sofa look here tomorrow evening there is to be a fancy dress ball at the stanborgs who live above us and probably wants me to go as a napolitan fisher girl and dance the tarantella that i learned at capri i see you are going to keep up the character yes told wants me to look here is the dress told had it made for me there but now it is all so dear we will easily put that right it is only some of the trimming come unseen here and there needle and thread now then that's all we want it is nice of you mrs lane so you are going to be so you are going to be dressed up tomorrow nora i'll tell you what i shall come in for a moment and see you in your fine feathers but i have completely forgotten to thank you for a delightful evening yesterday nora gets up and crosses the stage well i don't think yesterday was as pleasant as usual you have ought to have come to town a little earlier christine certainly towel does understand how to make a house pretty and attractive and so do you it seems to me you are not your father's daughter for nothing but tell me is dr rank always as depressed as he was yesterday no yesterday it was very noticeable i must tell you that he suffers from a very dangerous disease he has consumption of the spine poor creature his father was a horrible man committed all sort of excesses and that is why his son was sickly from childhood do you understand mrs lane dropping her swing but my dearest nora how do you know anything about such things nora walking about when you have three little children you get visits now and then from from married women who know something of medical matters and they talk about one thing and another mrs lind goes on swing a short silence does dr rank come here every day every day regularly he is tobel's most intimate friend and a great friend of mine too he is just like one of the family but tell me this is he perfectly sincere i mean isn't he the kind of a man that is very anxious to make himself agreeable not in the least what makes you think that when you introduced him to me yesterday he declared he had often heard my name mentioned in this house but afterwards i noticed that your husband hadn't the slightest idea who i was so how could dr rank that is quite right christine tower is so absurdly fond of me that he wants me absolutely to himself as he says at first he used to seem almost jealous if i mentioned any of the dear folk at home so naturally i gave up doing so but i often talk about such things with dr rank because he likes hearing about them listen to me nora you are still very like a child in many ways and i am older than you in many ways and have a little more experience let me tell you this you ought to make an end of it with dr rank what ought i make to make an end of of two things i think yesterday you talked some nonsense about a rich admirer who was to leave you money an admirer who doesn't exist unfortunately but what then is dr rank a man of means yes he is 
and comes here every day no oh yes yeah. and has no one to provide for no no one but and comes here every day yes i told you so but how can this well bred man be so tactless i don't understand you at all don't prevaricate nora do you suppose i don't guess who lent you the 250 pounds are you out of your senses how can you think of such a thing a friend of ours who comes here every day do you realize what a horribly painful position that would be then it really isn't he no certainly not it would never had in, have entered into my head for a moment besides he had no money to lend then he came into his money afterwards well i think that was lucky for you my dear nora no it would never have come into my head to ask dr rang although i'm quite sure that if i had asked him but of course you won't of course not i have no reason to think it could possibly be necessary but i'm quite sure that if i behind your husband's back i must make an end of it with the other one and that will be behind his back too i must make an end of it with him yes that is what i told you yesterday but nora walking up and down a man can put a thing like that straight much easier than a woman once husband yes nonsense standing still when you pay off a debt you get your bond back don't you yes as a matter of course and can tear it into a 100000 pieces and burn it up the nasty dirty paper mrs lynn looks hard at her lays down her sewing and gets up slowly no da you are concealing something from me do i look like as if i were something has happened to you since yesterday morning nora what is it nora going nearer to her christine listen hush this tall will come home do you mind going into the children for the present tall gang bear to see dress making going on let ann help you mrs lynn getting some of the certainly but i am not going away from here till we have mrs lynn had... getting some of the things together certainly but i am not going away from here till we have had it out with one another she goes into the room on the left as helmer comes in from the hall nora going to helmer i wanted you so much towel dear was there the dressmaker no it was christine she is helping me to put my dress in order you will see i shall look quite smart wasn't that a happy thought of mine now splendid but don't you think it is nice of me to to do as you wish nice because you do as your husband wishes well well you did little rope i am sure you did not mean it in that way but i am not going to disturb you you will want to be trying on your dress i expect i suppose you are going to work yes Look at that! I have just been into the bank. Turns to go, to go into his room. Torvald. Yes. If your little squirrel were to ask you for something very, very prettily, what then? Would you do it? I should look. I should like to hear what it is first. Your squirrel would run about and do all her tricks if you would be nice and do what she wants. Speak plainly. Your skylark would chirp out in every room with her song rising and falling. Well, my skylark does that anyhow. 
I would play the fairy and dance for you in the moonlight towel. Nora, you surely don't mean that request you made of me this morning. Nora, going near to him. Yes, Torvald, I beg you so earnestly. Have you really the courage to open up that question again? Yes, dear, you must do as I ask. You must let Crockstad keep his post in the bank. My dear Nora, it is his post that I have arranged Mrs. Lane shall have. Yes, you have been awfully kind about that. But you could just as well dismiss some other clerk. This is simply incredible obstinacy. Because you chose to give him a thoughtless promise that you would speak for him, I am expected to. This isn't the reason, Torvald. It is for your own sake. This fellow writes in the most scurrilous yourself. He can do you an unspeakable amount of harm. I am frightened to death of him. Ah, oh, I understand. It is a recollection of the past that scare you. What do you mean? Naturally, you are thinking of your father. Yes, yes, of course. Just recall to your mind what these malicious creatures wrote in the papers about Papa and how horribly they slandered him. I believe they would have procured his dismissal if the department had not sent you over to inquire into it and if you had not been so kindly disposed and helpful to him. My little Nora. There is an important difference between your father and me. Your father's reputation as a public official was not above suspicion. Mine is, and I hope it will continue to be so, as long as I hold my office. You never can tell what mischief this man may have may contrive. We ought to be so well off, so snug and happy here in our peaceful home and have no cares, you and I and the children, Torvald. This is why I beg you so earnestly. And it is just by interceding for him that you make it impossible for me to keep him. It is already known at the bank that I mean to dismiss Crockstad. Is it to get about now that the new manager has changed his mind at his wife's bidding? And what if it did? Of course, if only this obstinate little person can get her way. Do you suppose? I'm going to make myself ridiculous before my whole staff to let people think that I am a man to be swayed by all sort of outside influence. I should very soon feel the consequence of it. I can tell you. And besides, there is one thing that makes it Im quite impossible for me to have Krogestad in the bank as long as I am manager. Whatever is that? His moral feelings I might perhaps have overlooked if necessary. Yes, you could, couldn't you? And I hear he is a good worker too, but I knew him when we were boys. It was one of those rare friendships that so often prove an incubus in afterlife. I may as well tell you plainly, we were once on very intimate terms with one another, but this tactless fellow lays no restraint upon himself when other persons are present. On the contrary, he thinks it will give him the right to adopt a familiar tone with me. And every minute it is, I say Halmer, old fellow, and that sort of thing. I assure you, it is extremely painful to me. I would make my position in the bank intolerable. Torvald, I don't believe you mean that. Don't you? Why not? Because it is such a narrow-minded way of looking at things. What are you saying? Narrow-minded? Do you think I am narrow-minded? No, just the opposite, dear. And it is exactly for that reason. It is the same thing. You say my point of view is narrow-minded. So I must be so too. Narrow-minded. Very well. I must put an end to this. Goes to the hall door and calls. Helen. What are you going to do? Helmer looking among his papers. Settle it. Enter mate. Look here. Take this letter and go downstairs with it at once. Find a messenger and tell him to deliver it. And be quick. The address is on it and here is the money. Very well, sir. Exit with the letters. Helmer putting his papers together. Now then, little Miss Oftenit. 
Nora breathlessly. Torvald, what was that letter? Krogstad's dismissal. Call her back, Torvald. There is still time. Oh, Torvald, call her back. Do it for my sake. For your own sake. For the children's sake. Do you hear me, Torvald? Call her back. You don't know what that letter can bring upon us. It's too late. Yes, it's too late. My dear Nora, I can forgive the anxiety you are in, although really it is an insult to me. It is indeed, isn't it? An insult to think that I should be afraid of a starving quill driver's vengeance. But I forgive you, nevertheless, because it is such eloquent witness to your great love for me. Takes her in his arms. And that is as it should be, my own darling Nora. Come what will. You may be sure I shall have both courage and strength if they be needed. You will see. I am man enough to take everything upon myself. Nora, in a stricken voice. What do you mean by that? Everything I say. Nora, recovering herself. You will never have to do that. That's right. Well, you will steer it, Nora, as man and wife should. That is how it shall be. Cursing her. Are you content now? There, there. Not these frightened of size. The whole thing is only the wildest fancy. Now you must go and play through the tarantella and practice with your tambourine. I shall go into the inner office and shut the door. And I shall hear nothing. You can make as much noise as you please. Turns back at the door. And when Rank comes, tell him where he will find me. Nods to her, takes his paper and goes into his room and shuts the door after him. Nora, bewildered with anxiety, stand as if rooted to the spot and whisper. He was capable of doing it. He will do it. He will do it in spite of everything. No, not that. Never, never anything rather than that. Oh, for some help, some way out of it. The doorbell rings. Dr. Rank, anything rather than that. Anything, whatever it is. She puts her hands over her face, pulls herself together, goes to the door and opens it. Rank is standing without hanging up his coat. During the following dialogue, it begins to go dark. Good day, Dr. Rank. I knew your ring. But you mustn't go into Torvald now. I think he's busy with something. And you? Nora brings him in and shuts the door after him. Oh, you know very well. I always have time for you. Thank you. I shall make use of as much of it as I can. What do you mean by that? As much of it as you can? Well, does that alarm you? It was such a strange way of putting it. Is anything likely to happen? Nothing. But what I have long been prepared for? But I certainly didn't expect it to happen so soon. Nora gripping him by the arm. What have you found out? Dr. Rank, you must tell me. Rank sitting down by the stove. It is all up with me and it can't be helped. Nora with a sign of relief. Is it about yourself? Who else? It is no use lying to oneself. I am the most wretched of all my patients, Mrs. Halmer. Lately, I have been taking stock of my internal economy. Bankrupt. Probably within a month, I shall lie rooting in the churchyard. What an ugly thing to say. The thing itself is cursedly ugly. And the worst of it is that I shall have to pay so much more than is ugly before that. I shall only make one more examination of myself. When I was done that, I shall know pretty certainly when it will be that the horrors of dissolution will begin. There is something I want to tell you. Helmer's refined nature gives him an unconquerable disgust of everything that is ugly. I won't have him in my secret. Oh, but Dr. Rank... I won't have him there, not any, on any account. I bar my door to him. As soon as I am quite certain that the worst has come, I shall send you my car. 
with a black cross on it and then you will know that the lonesome inn has begun you are quite absurd today and i wanted you so much to be in a really good humor with death stalking beside me to have to pay this penalty for another man's sin is there any justice in that and in every single family in one way or another some such inexorable retribution is being accepted nora putting rubbish. her hands over her ears rubbish do talk of something cheerful oh it's a mere laughing matter the whole thing my poor innocent spine has to suffer for my father's youthful amusements nora sitting at the table on the left i suppose you mean that he was too partial to asparagus and potato for grass don't you yes and to truffles truffles yes and oysters too i suppose oysters of course that goes without saying and heaps of pot and champagne it is sad that all these nice things should take their revenge on our bones especially that they should revenge themselves on the unlucky bones of those who have not had the satisfaction of enjoying them yes that is part of it all rang with a searching look at her hmm nora after a short pause why did you smile no it was you that laughed No, it was you that smiled, Doctor Rank. Rank rising. You are a great old rascal. Then I thought. I am a lassie. So it seems. Nora putting her hands on his shoulders. Dear, dear Doctor Rank, death mustn't take you away from trouble than me. It is a loss you loss you would easily recover from. those who are gone are soon forgotten nora looking at him anxiously do you believe that people form new ties and then who will form new ties both you and helmer when i am gone you yourself are already on the high road to it i think What did that Mrs. Lind want here last night? Oh, you don't mean to say you are jealous of poor Christine? Yes, I am. She will be my successor in this house. When I am done for, this woman will. Hush! Don't speak so loud. She is in that room. Today again? There you see. She has only come to sew my dress for me. Bless my soul! How unreasonable you are! sits down on the sofa be nice now dr rank and tomorrow you will see how beautifully i should dance and you can imagine i'm doing it all for you and for travel too of course takes various things out of the box dr rank come and sit here and i will show you something rank sitting down what is it just look at those silk stockings flesh colored aren't they lovely it is so dark here now but tomorrow no 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 you must only look at the feet oh well you may have leave to look at the legs too hmm why are you looking so critical don't you think they will fit me i have no means of forming an opinion about that nora looks at him for a moment for shame hits him lightly on the ears with the stocking that's to punish you folds them up again and what are the nice things am i to be allowed to see not a single thing more for being so naughty she looks among the things humming to herself rank after a short silence when i am sitting here talking to you as intimately as this i cannot imagine for a moment what would have become of me if i had never come into this house nora is smiling i believe you do feel thoroughly at home with us 
rank in a lower voice looking straight in front of him and to be obliged to leave it all nonsense you are not going to leave it rank as before i not be able to leave behind one the slightest token of one's gratitude scarcely even a fleeting regret nothing but an empty place which the first comer can feel as well as any other and if i asked you for a no for what for a big proof of your friendship yes yes i mean a tremendously big favor would you really make me so happy for once uh but you don't know what it is yet no but tell me i really can't doctor rank it is something out of all reason it means advice and help and a favor the bigger a thing it is the better i can't conceive what it is you mean to tell me haven't i your confidence more than anyone else i know you are my truest and best friend and so i will tell you what it is well dr rank it is something you must help me to prevent You know how devotedly, how inexpressibly deeply, Tovel loves me. He would never for a moment hesitate to give his life for me. Rank leaning toward her. Nora, do you think he is the only one? Nora, with a slight start. The only one. The only one who would gladly give his life for your sake. Nora, sadly. is that it i was determined you should know it before i went away and there will never be a better opportunity than this now you know it nora i now you know too that you can trust me as you would trust no one else nora rises deliberately and quietly let me pass rank makes room for her to pass him but sit still nora nora at the hall door helen bring in the lamp goes over to the stove dear doctor rank that was really horrid of you to have loved you as much as anyone else does was that horrid no but to go and tell me so that was really no need what do you mean did you know maid enters with the lamp put it down on the table and goes out nora mrs helmer tell me had you any idea of this Oh, how do I know whether I had or whether I hadn't? I really can't tell you. To think you could be so clumsy, Doctor Rang. We were getting on so nicely. Well, at all events, you know now that you can command me, body and soul. You won't you speak out? Nora, looking at him. After what happened, I beg you to let me know what it is. I can't tell you anything now. Yes, yes. You must not punish me in that way. Let me have permission to do for you whatever a man may do. You can do nothing for me now. Besides, I really don't need any help at all. You will find that the whole thing is a really fancy on my part. It really is so. Of course, it is. Sits down in the rocking chairs and looks at him with a smile. You're a nice sort of man, Doctor Rank. Don't you feel ashamed of yourself now that lamp has come? Not a bit, but perhaps I had better go forever. No, indeed, you shall not. Of course, I'll do without you. Yes, but you. 
Oh, I'm always tremendously pleased when you come. It is just that that put me on the wrong track. You are a riches to me. I have often thought that you would almost as soon be in my company as in Helmus. Yes, you see, there are some people one loves best, and others whom one almost always rather have as companions. Yes, there is something in that. When I was at home, of course, I loved Papa best, but I always thought it tremendous fun if I could steal down into the maids' room because they never moralized at all and talked to each other about such entertaining things. I see. It is their place I have taken. Nora jumping up and going to him. Oh dear, nice Dr. Rank. I never meant that at all. But surely you that being with Torvald is a little like being with Papa. Enter maid from the hall. If you please, ma'am. Whisper and hands her a card. Nora glancing at the card. Oh. Puts it in her pocket. Is there anything wrong? Uh, no, no, not in the least. Uh, it is only something. It is my new dress. What? Your dress is lying there. Oh, yes, that one. But this is another. I ordered it. Torvald mustn't know about it. Oh, ho. then that was the great secret. Of course, just going to him. He's sitting in the inner room. Keep him as long as... Make your mind easy. I won't let him escape. Goes into the Helmer's room. Nora to the maid. And he's standing waiting in the kitchen? Yes, he came up the back stairs. But didn't you tell him no one was in? Yes, but it was no good. He won't go away? No, he says he won't until he has seen you, ma'am. Well, let him come in, but quietly. Helen, you mustn't say anything about it to anyone. It is a surprise for my husband. Yes, ma'am, I quite understand. Made exit. This dreadful thing is going to happen. It will happen in spite of me. No, 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 it can't happen. It shan't happen. She boards the door of Helmer's room. The maid opens the door, hall door, for Cogstead and shuts after him. He is wearing a fur coat, high boot and a fur cap. Nora advancing towards him. Speak low, my husband is at home. No matter about that. What do you want of me? An explanation of something. Make haste then. What is it? You know, I suppose that I have got my dismissal. I couldn't prevent it, Mr. Crockstad. I fought as hard as I could on your side, but it was no good. Does your husband love you so little then? He knows what I can expose you to and get he ventures. How can you suppose that he has any knowledge, knowledge of the sort? I didn't suppose so at all. It would not be the least like our dear Tolbert Helmer to show so much courage. Mr. Crockstad, a little respect for my husband, please. Certainly, all the respect he deserves. But since you have kept the matter so carefully to yourself, I make bold to suppose that you have a little clearer idea than you had yesterday of what it actually is that you have done. More than you could ever teach me. Yes, such a bad lawyer as I am. What is it you want of me? Only to see how you wear, Mrs. Helmer. I have been thinking about you all day long. A mere cashier, a quill driver, a, well, a man like me. Even he has a little of what is called feeling, you know? Oh, it then. Think of my little children. 
have you and your husband thought of mine but never mind about that i only wanted to tell you uh, that you need to take this matter too seriously in the first place there will be no accusation made on my part no of course not i was sure of that the whole thing can be arranged amicably there is no reason any why anyone should know anything about it it will remain a secret between us three my husband must never get to know about anything about it how will you be able to prevent it am i to understand that you can pay the balance that is owing no not just at the present or perhaps that you have some expedient for raising the money soon no expedient expedient that i mean to make use of well in any case it would have been of no use to you now if you stood there with ever so much money in your hand i would never part with your bond tell me what purpose you mean to put it to i shall only preserve it keep it in my procession no one who is not concerned in the matter shall have the slightest hint of it so that if the thought of it has driven you to any despite resolution it has if you had it in your mind to run away from your home i had i had or even something worse nora how could you know that how could you know that give up the idea how did you know i had thought of that most of us think of that at first i did that but i hadn't the courage nora faintly how no more had you? i august said in a tone of relief no that's it isn't it you hadn't the courage either no i haven't i haven't besides it would have been a great piece of folly once the first storm at home is over i have a letter for your husband in my pocket tell him him everything in as lenient a manner as i possibly could nora quickly you mustn't get the letter tear it up i will find some means of getting money excuse me mrs helma but i think i told you just how i'm not speaking of what i owe you tell me what sum you are asking my husband for and i will get the money i am not asking for your husband for a penny what do you want then i will tell you i want to rehabilitate myself mrs helmer i want to get on and in your in that your husband must help me for the last year and a half i have had not had a hand in anything dishonorable and all that time i have been struggling in most restricted circumstances i was content to my way work my way up step by step now i am turned out and i am not going to be satisfied with merely being taken with into favor again i want to get on i tell you i want to get on into the bank again in a higher position your husband must make a place for me that he will never do he will i know him he dare not protest and as soon as i am in there again with him then you will see within a year 
i shall be the manager's right hand it will be needs proxted and not toward halmer to manages the bank that's a thing you will never see do you mean that you will i have courage enough for it now oh you can't frighten me a fine spoiled lady like you you will see you will see under the ice perhaps down into the cold cold black water and then in the spring to float up to the surface all horrible and unrecognizable with your hair fallen out you can't frighten me nor you me people don't do such things mrs helmer besides what use would it be i should have him completely in my power all the same afterwards i am no longer have you got that it is i who have the keeping of your reputation nora stand is speechlessly looking at him well now i have warned you do not do anything foolish when helmer has had my letter i shall expect a message from him and be sure you remember that it is your husband himself who has forced me into such ways as this again i will never forgive him for that goodbye mrs helmer exit to the hall nora goes to the hall door opens it slightly and listen he is going he is not putting the letter in the box oh no no that's impossible open the door by degrees what is that he is standing outside he is not going downstairs is he hesitating can he a letter drops into the box then cogs that foot step are here till they die away as he goes downstairs nora utters a stifled cry and runs across the room to the table by the sofa a short pause in the letter box steal across to the hall door there it lies torvald torvald there is no hope for us now mrs lynn comes in from the room on the left carrying a dress dear i can't see anything more to mend now would you like to try it on Nora in a hoarse whisper. Christine, come here. Mrs. Lane throwing the dress down on the sofa. What is the matter with you? You look so agitated. Come here. Do you see that letter? There. Look. You can see it through the glass in the letter box. Yes, I see it. That letter is from Crockstead. Nora it was Crockstead who lent you the money Yes and now Torvald will know all about it Believe me Nora that's the best thing for both of you You don't know all I forged a name Good heavens I only want to say this to you Cousin you must be my witness your witness what do you mean what am i to if i should go out of my mind and it might easily happen nora or if anything else should happen to me anything for instance that might prevent my being here nora nora you are quite out of your mind and if it should happen that there were someone who wanted to take all the responsibility all the blame you understand yes yes but how can you suppose then you must be my witness that is it is not true christine i am not out of my mind at all i am in my right senses now and i tell you no one else has known anything about it i and i alone did the whole thing remember that i will indeed but i don't understand all this
how should you understand it a wonderful thing is going to happen a wonderful thing yes yes a, a wonderful thing but it is so terrible christine it mustn't happen not for all the world i will go at once and see crockston don't go to him he will do you some harm there was a time when he would gladly do anything for my sake he where does he live how should i know yes feeling in her pocket here is his card but the letter the letter helmer calls from his room knocking at the door nora nora cries out anxiously oh what's that uh, what do you want don't be so frightened we are not coming in you have locked the door are you trying on your dress yes that's it i look so nice towel mrs lin who has read the card i see he lives at the corner here yes but it's no use it is hopeless the letter is lying there in the box and your husband keeps the key yes always crocks dad must ask for this letter back unread he must find some pretense but it is just at this time that towel generally you must deal with him go in to him in the meantime i'll come back as soon as i can she goes out hurriedly through the hall door nora goes to the helmer's room open it and peep in torvald helmer from the inner room well may I venture at last to come into my own room again come my long rank now you will see halting in the doorway but what is this what is what dear rank led me to expect a splendid transformation rank in the doorway i understood so but evidently i was mistaken yes nobody is to have the chance of admiring me in my dress until tomorrow but my dear nora you look so worn out have you been practicing too much no i have not practiced at all but you will need to yes indeed i shall toward but i can't get on a bit without you to help me i have absolutely forgotten the whole thing oh we will soon work it up again yes help me toward promise that you will i am so nervous about it all the people you must give yourself up to me entirely this evening not the tiniest bit of business you mustn't even take a pen in your hand will you promise tobel dear i promise this evening i will be wholly and absolutely at your service you helpless little mortal ah by the way first of all i will just goes toward the hall door what are you going to do there only see if any letters have come no no don't do that toward why not toward please don't there is nothing there well let me look turns to go to the letter box nora at the piano plays the first bar of the tarantella helma stops in the doorway aha i can't join tomorrow if i don't practice with you helma going up to her are you really so afraid of it dear yes so dreadfully afraid of it let me practice at once there is time now before we go to dinner sit down and play for me towel dear criticize me and correct me as you play with great pleasure if you wish me to sits down at the piano nora takes out of the box a tambourine and a long variegated shawl she has to lead wrap the shawl around her then she springs to the front of the stage and calls out now dance Helmer plays and Nora dances. Rank stands by the piano behind Helmer and looks on Helmer as he plays. Slower, slower. I can't do it any other way. Not so violently, Nora. This is the way. 
Helmer stops playing. No, no, that's not a bit right. Nora laughing and swinging the tambourine. Didn't I tell you so? Let me play for her. Helma getting up. Yes, do. I can correct her better then. Rang sits down at the piano and plays. Nora dances more and more wildly. Helma has taken up a position beside the stove and during her dance giving her a frequent instruction. She does not seem to hear him. Her hair comes down and falls over her shoulders. She pays no attention to it but going but goes on dancing. Enter Mrs. Lin. Mrs. Lin is standing as it is spells bound, bound in the doorway. Oh. Nora as she dances. Such fun Christine. My dear darling Nora, you are dancing as if your life depended on it. So it does. Stop rank. This is sheer madness. Stop. I tell you. Rank stops playing and Nora suddenly stands still. Helmer goes up to her. I could never have believed it. You have forgotten everything. I taught you. Nora There. throwing away the tambourine. There, you see. You will want a lot of coaching. Yes, you see how much I need it. You must coach me to the last minute. Promise me that, Torvald. You can depend on me. You must not think of anything but me, either today or tomorrow. You mustn't open a single letter, not even open the letter box. Ah, uh, you are still afraid of that fellow? Yes, indeed I am. Nora, I can tell you from your looks that there is a letter from him lying there. I don't know. I think that there is, but you must not read anything of that kind now. Nothing horrid must come between us till this is all over. Rang whispered to Helmer. You must not contradict her. Helmer taking her in his arms. A child shall have her way, but tomorrow night, after you have danced, then you will be free. The maid appears in the doorway to the right. Dinner is served, ma'am. We will have champagne, Helen. Very good, ma'am. Hello, are we going to have a banquet? Helma yes. exit. Yes, a champagne banquet till the small hours. Calls out. And a few macaroons, Helen. Lots, just for once. Come, come. Don't be so wild and nervous. Be my own little skylark, as you used. Yes, dear, I will. But go in now, and you too, Doctor Rank. Christine, you must help me to do up my hair. Rank whispered to Helmer as they go out. I suppose there is nothing. She is not expecting anything. Far from it, my dear fellow. It is simply nothing more than this childish nervousness. I was telling you of. They go into the right hand room. Well. Gone out of town. I could tell from your face. He's coming home tomorrow evening. I wrote a note for him. He should have let it alone. You must prevent nothing. After all, it is splendid to be waiting for a wonderful thing to happen. What is it that you are waiting for? Oh, you wouldn't understand. Go into them. I will come in a moment. Moment. Mrs. Jane goes into the dining room. Nora stands still for a little while, as if to compose herself. Then she looks at her watch. Five o'clock, seven hours till midnight, and then four and twenty hours till the next midnight. Then the tarantula will be over. Twenty-four and seven, thirty-one hours to live. Helmer from the doorway on the right. Where is my little Skyla? Nora going to him with her arms outstretched. Here she is. That's the end of Act Two of A Doll's House. We hope you enjoyed the session. Apologies for the mistakes we made, and we sincerely hope that you'll overlook the uh, the network issue that we have due to which. That's all for today. Meet you all next.